Okay, so as we were discussing, and Delaney just mentioned, we always do left side down abdomen. How come? Because we want we want to look at something. We're supposed to be looking at something. What do you think? Um. Good guess, but no. <laughs> what do you think? What are we looking it's for? It's something I don't remember though. Yeah. Y'all sat in a big old lecture for like three solid it's hours. Has to do with no, the five hours. No, five hours. Has to do with the stomach? Yeah. 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 So you want, the, you want to have the liver up to, to provide That's the right. Yeah. Yeah. air. There you go. Okay, the we want the liver side up so that just in case there's any free <laughs> air bubbling around in there, we'll see it. Now, how come we wouldn't see it if we had it up against the spleen? Like if we had the patient's right side down. Mm. Yeah, because the spleen is really tiny. And what else is over on the left side? Stomach. Stomach, yep. Other things too, like the splenic flexure of the large intestine, which tends to be higher on the left side of the body. Okay, the hepatic flexure is, is a thing, but it's push down because the liver is in the way. The liver is a big homogenous area and if there's any air bubble there, because the liver looks light gray on an x-ray, right? So an air bubble is going to be like a dark stripe up above that liver that's, and you're going to be able to see that's something that shouldn't ought to be there. You know, so you know, even if you're not a doctor you can recognize something's up. Okay, so in order to do this abdomen x-ray, what we're going to do, and I typically would not put this deal here. How come I don't want to put this on the table before I get my patient in place? They might knock it over, exactly. Not that we would know anything about that, right, Crew? That's right. <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of thing that happens to other people. Now, should I do this PA or AP? Because I'm going to have my patient laying recumbent on the table. Should they be facing towards me or away from me? Towards me. Could be. Does it matter? No. Yes. Yeah. It depends on what you're looking for, right? How come? Okay, Mr. Evan, well, elucidate, well, please. No, no, I guess not. Well, I don't know. Okay, here's the truth. It doesn't really matter. So if your patient comes in head first, then you can still get them up here on the table. As long as their left side's down, we can shoot this thing PA, no problem, you know, that works. Um, or if the patient's brought in feet first so that their head is at this end of the table, then we can lay them this way, and that way we're, we're facing them, we can shoot at AP. Either way, it doesn't matter as long as your image is properly marked. So. There's no need to like take the stretcher back out and swing it around and bring it back in. Um, you know, just do it the, the quickest and most efficient way for you. Now what we'll do today, just so that we can see what's going on, I'm going to just put, we're going to switch. We're going to put the head of the table at the foot, and this way I'll be able to lay my helpless victim right here, and I'll go ahead and get their left side down they'll be facing towards me. Do I have any volunteers to be my helpless victim? <laughs> what, nobody's going to jump? Sure. All right, <laughs> we have a volunteer. All right, sir, if you would step forward, please. And just have a seat on this table right here. Okay, and now what I'm going to ask you to do is lay down across this sponge, just kind of scoot as far back towards the edge of the table as you can, and then lay down across this sponge on your left side. There you go. Let me just double up this pillow for you. There we go. We strive for five. We want our patient to be as comfortable as possible. And what I'm going to do, I can see that this patient's not exactly straight on the bed. I'm going to go ahead and straighten him out a little bit. I tell you, I'm going to straighten you out one way or another. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to scoot his shoulders back a little bit. Now he's much more straight on the table. And he's close to the back of the table. You want to be careful here. You don't want this man to roll off and wind up getting hurt. And with the help of an image receptor, 
and this handy stand. I'm going to set us up for a shot here. Okay, now, where am I supposed to be aiming? Where's my central ray location going to be? Cross. Okay, so I got one vote for crest. Above the cross. Okay, speak up, Ms. Delaney. What would you say? Above the crest. Above the crest. Okay, very good. How far above the crest do you think? Two inches. There oh, you yeah. go. And we know from previous experience that Mr. Lee's fingers, three of them, make two inches. So that's about where I'm going to be aiming. Two inches above the crest. That's going to help me go ahead and get my equipment situated, and I can fine-tune it if I need to, which I may. But I'm going to go ahead. This is going to put me in the general vicinity. Yeah, I'm liking it. Okay, and here's something else I can check. If the top of my image receptor is about even with the patient's axilla, their armpit, then I know I'm going to be in the ballpark. And that looks about right. Right there's the middle of my image receptor. Okay? Very good. Now I just need to bring in my tube. And thankfully I've got this overhead crane. And Ms. Delaney, you may need to change locations. All right. So that you can see what's going on here. Okay, now what kind of an SID do I need? 40. 40 inch minimum. <laughs> what? Sorry, I'm laughing at the way you... Oh. Alright, so right there is about 52 inches. So I'm going to go in a little bit more. And it doesn't have to be exactly 40 inches. Remember, we're doing this... We're doing this uh, decubitus, cross table, um, so I don't have to worry about my interlocks, you know, or being exactly 40 inches off the table before I can make an exposure. Now, um, Mr. Evan, if you would, hand me my markers from over there. Ordinarily, I keep my markers in my pockets. Okay, so I've got the patient's left side down, I think we would all agree, which means that the right side must be the one that's up. And people all the time ask, well, should I put my marker high, should I put my marker low? I don't care. As long as it is out of the patient's anatomy and on the correct side of their body. Now, since I've got a decubitus set up here, that means that, yeah, see right there? That marker is going to be in the light field. Um, that means it's off the patient's anatomy. So I don't have to worry about it getting in the way. Um, and, you know, could I put it higher or lower? Yeah, absolutely. I could put it down here. Um, if I put it down here, then it's going to be in the patient's uh, hip area. There's not really anything of interest there anyways. Remember, because your intestines, they kind of start wide up at the uh, diaphragms, and then the whole thing just kind of funnels and funnels and funnels until it comes down to a point in the pelvis. So, you know, just kind of keep that V-shaped deal in mind. Um, you know, whenever you're putting your markers on. Okay, super. So there the man is. Now, can I shield this man's gonads? Yes. Why, yes, I can. The gonads are down below my area of interest, so I can safely put a shield on without worrying about that shield getting in my image. So I've got the man laid out, you know, pretty comfortably, I think. You doing okay, patient? Yeah. All right, are his arms up out of the way? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Remember, this isn't a chest x-ray. I don't have to worry so much about his arms being in the way as I did with the decubitus chest. Okay, and he is relatively straight. I can look at his shoulders and see that they're lined up one on top of the other. Now, if he's like lean back, you know, or rolled forward, then I would want to make an adjustment here and just say, hey, sir, could you roll forward for me just a little bit? Hold that position. Hold still. All right, now, should I do this on inspiration or expiration? Expiration. Expiration. That takes some of the compression off the abdominal tissue. Okay, so, sir, if you wouldn't mind taking in a big deep breath for me, blow it all the way out, 
hold it out and hold still. Beep. Okay, outstanding. You can relax and breathe normally. Okay, so now I have done a decubitus chest x-ray. Did I miss anything? This is y'all's opportunity to critique the prof. Well, Tell me about all my misdeeds. Decubitus abdomen. Decubitus abdomen. You said chest. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Okay, do y'all feel like you can replicate all this? You got this? <clears throat> oh, yeah, 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 I got this, I got this, no problem. All right, well, we'll see. All right, hold up just a second here, patient. All right, thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been another exciting episode of X-Ray Education featuring X-Ray Ed and company. See y'all next time. Ha <laughs> ha.